All right, welcome everybody to our panel on hybrid work and how specialty collaboration works in the hybrid world. And I'm just once again excited to join by some of our fellow employees from WatchCard, from actually all over the world, I should say, because we have Anthony from Australia, so that's great. So before we get going, I'm gonna ask each of you to just do a quick intro about your role at the company and specifically kind of how you define collaboration kind of in your role. Let's start with Austin. Yeah, so my name is Austin Clark and I lead global teams all over the world, um, have since I joined here. Uh, we bridge the gap between internal business systems and developers and our external products. Um, for me, we talk about defining collaboration. Um, it's all about taking these diverse inputs, looking for a common goal, and then driving to achieve it. So that's good. Yeah. All right, Devin, we'll go to you next. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm a product manager at WatchGuard. Um, and I think it's pretty interesting to be in the product management uh, role because I do think of it as the center of a lot of different departments and different skill sets. So I think collaboration is a big part of my role as a product manager. Um, you have marketing and sales as well as engineering that you're working with consistently to execute on a product or a project. So I find that collaboration is really about kind of, as Austin said, is rallying behind a common goal, um, multiple people and multiple departments coming together to achieve something that you wouldn't have been able to achieve by yourself. So that's how I would define collaboration. Right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mariel? Hi, uh, I'm Mariel. I'm a tax manager here at WatchGuard. Um, for me, collaboration is both internal and external. So like I usually collaborate with the people internally in order for me to understand the business operations and how that applies to tax, like how is going to how it is going to impact tax. And then I also collaborate with people externally with our tax service providers, with, sometimes with our clients, just to kind of make sure that correct sales tax is uh, applied and things like that. So it's really, as Austin and Devin said, uh, getting towards like one specific goal. All right. Thank you, Mario. Uh, Anthony. Well, first of all, g'day. I thought I'd give you an Australian hello. Um, so I'm Anthony Daniel. Uh, I'm the Regional Director for Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. So I work within the Sales uh, Department Division within WatchGuard. And collaboration for sales overall is really, really important. Because um, when we look at it, there's, there's internal collaboration within you know, WatchGuard employees and there's external where we collaborate with other vendors like the data casayers because we our, our firewalls integrate so there's many forms but in relation to this for us for me collaboration is is managing the team having you know, the individuals and the groups working together to be able to achieve goals um you know because we, ultimately you want to uh, um, produce an outcome out of it and that needs to have a good communication mutual understanding um, and that this in particular into my role, it's important collaborating is crucial because I need to be able to leverage product mar uh, product marketing, um, the technical team. So sales will always sit in the middle and without the support of everyone around sales, it wouldn't, won't have a successful role. So utilizing the strengths um, from every team member within the organization for us to have you know, clear communication and having a, a positive outcome. That's kind of how I see Collaboration. Great, thank you, Anthony. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Devin defined product management as a function sitting in the middle. Anthony defined sales defining the functional middle. But what's interesting about that is, you know, collaboration is about around you, right? So it's truly around people you collaborate with and kind of the outcome, as all of you said, kind of outcome you're trying to achieve. So I'll start with Austin. Just Austin, just from your perspective, like with that definition in mind pre-pandemic and now three years later in a truly hybrid operation like how has that changed for you yeah so it was it's kind of interesting for me um when my role when i joined WatchGuard pre-pandemic about four and a half years ago um a lot of the teams may have been based in seattle or in the americas but the team that i actually uh, managed is global 
um, and always has been a fully remote team. So for me, pre-pandemic, there was a lot of, um, you know, walking to the office next door and talking to maybe somebody in product management, but then still having to jump on the call or bring people into a, uh, oh, we need to have a conference room and make sure we have the screen showing for the people who may be somewhere else in the world. Yeah, I think post pandemic, one of the, the big changes there is it's it's really leveled the playing field. You know, I would say from a collaboration standpoint, for those employees who are remote and maybe would miss out on that water cooler talk, right? Um, or where I might miss out if I stayed home that day, you know, and worked from home. Um, now everybody's going to be jumping in the same group chat, in the same Zoom call, MS Teams call. Uh, you know, this same kind of leveled playing field amongst us all. And I, I think I think that's where I've seen a lot of positive benefits is it brings more diversity into our conversations. That's great. That's a great point. Um, definitely, definitely I agree that it's very equitable now compared to what it used to be on a global basis. Um, Devin, how about you? Sure. So uh, I might be a little bit of a unique instance here where my before the pandemic was actually as a student. So um, WatchGuard is my first uh, corporate job, which is super exciting. But as a Gen Zer coming into the workforce from going to school on Zoom, I think it is a, a unique experience, especially in terms of when I was searching for jobs in the job market. Um, most of the jobs that I was seeing were fully remote. Um, and one of the things that actually drew me to WatchGuard was the fact that um, while there was the remote option for work, I lived close enough where I could go into that office and have that experience of um, meeting people who were also in the office, um, kind of getting that face-to-face -face contact that I hadn't had in a while. So that is something that I think a lot of the other Gen Z like newcomers into the field are, are looking for is um, kind of this mixed collaborative space we're used to technology. We like technology. We like the remote flexibility, but I think we do, you know, care about that commu um, human connection. Um, so I am grateful that at WatchGuard, at least, that I had the opportunity of meeting people in person as well as doing my job remotely. Great point, um, Marielle. Anything to add to that as well from your perspective? Uh, for me, I'm kind of similar. Uh, to Devin, I started at WatchGuard during the pandemic. So when I started, the only people that I've met are the people that interviewed me. Um, so I haven't even seen the office. Uh, everything was new, and the people that I'm working, I'm working with, like I've never met them before. Um, so it was a little bit challenging at first because you know, like adjusting from um, in person to remote, it was sometimes like I would be concerned that, you know, I'm bugging people a lot, but because I'm pinging them on teams because, you know, I also want to get to know the people that I'm working with. Um, so sometimes it's not even work related. Sometimes I would be like, hey, how was your weekend? Things like that. Um, and, you know, I don't want to be the person who always bugs people, but I also want to build that connection. So I think what's good with our current setup right now is I can go to the office every once in a while if I really want to meet with people. So sometimes what our team will do is we will agree on a day that we're just going to go there. So it's more for building that relationship instead of um, just it being um, over conference calls. So I, I think having that aspect is uh, is good as well. Oh, that's a great point. I think just that flexibility, actually, Devin kind of talked about it, just having this, the combination of the options available is obviously just great, especially for those employees who do have access to a, a physical office where there's enough employees close by, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony, how about you? Uh, what's the, what's being changed in sales over in the beginning, I found it extremely difficult uh, because I'm a person of habit. I do the same thing pretty much every day and coming into the office, meeting partners face to face. I, I'm very structured like that. So I found it difficult in the beginning. But what, what then what I learned that I'm able to actually do more and get, get across more partners 
in the hybrid environment, doing things virtually, where I might only be able to see three partners in a day face to face, I can now do six, I can now do seven. So I started to really adapt and and, and, and it's working quite well now. Uh, you can now obviously things have changed a little bit uh, with the pandemic. Now you can actually go out and see partners, but now you've got that mix. I can do three calls in the morning and I can go see three partners in the afternoon so, or be with my team, et cetera. So your, your calendar within sales now, you have the option of both and you have that flexibility. Um, so, so that I've kind of learnt um, and I get the team to come in you know, twice a week as well. We still, we still meet, we still come into the office, the Sydney based people. And then I get people to obviously fly in whenever we can. So we have that balance that now seems to work. So there, we have created a good dynamic, um, it will, but it was hard in the beginning, but I think now we're used to it and things are working well, quite happy with it. Yeah. One thing I wanted to kind of ask, and now this is the stage where any of you can jump in. Um, it's really around the tools. I think actually Austin, you talked about like, pre-pandemic, it felt like when you were bringing somebody in, either they were just on a call and then you would share a screen. Of course, now it's just different, you know, using Teams, Zoom, whatever people are using to to truly have that really unique experience. Like, how do you think the tools have impacted collaboration? Like, is it for the better? Is it for the worse? Are there things that we still miss from that in-person kind of collaboration as well? Yeah, I mean, I can jump in real quick because the tools definitely like being in the tech field and, and a technical person I, I started in the engineering organization in our operations organization now um you know, whiteboarding is is a huge thing and that was one of the first kind of learning curves for us chat had chat down, you know, we, uh, we would build graphs, we'll build diagrams and we'll send them. We handle emails, these zoom conference and teams chats. That's, 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 that's solved, but whiteboarding, that was, that was definitely some learning curve for us. And, um, you, we found that there's a lot of different things for us that helped, uh, make that easier ranging from, getting little digitizers so we could draw on a screen instead of trying to use a mouse. It's just not the same, right? To turn off everything except for that whiteboard. That way it's kind of like there's no distractions. You're just right here and you can let the creative process flow. But, uh, you know, I think from a tools perspective, um, there have been some spots that have uh, helped us that we were there before. And then there's been some spots that collaboration has definitely been a challenge in this hybrid environment in certain areas, but I think we, we, we adapt, you know, we've learned and we've adapted. I think another thing to that is the consolidation of tools has also been, I think, very helpful when it comes to um, collaboration and just working in a remote environment. Um, I know like using Teams, you have everything at your fingertips from um, meeting meetings, calendar, uh, chats, and even sending um, like files and things like that. Um, so I find that this keeps me like efficient and I'm not losing things from having to open a bunch of different um, applications where I felt like at the beginning um, of remote work, it was fairly scattered. And I think um, the tech space has done a good job of consolidating those tools to make it more user friendly for everyone. Absolutely. Um, just one of the other questions that I had was, and actually, Devin, I'm going to stick with you for a second. I remember during the interview process, you said, when I asked why WatchCard, you said this was hybrid work operation was one of the key reasons. But if you think from not just your perspective, but any other kind of new employee coming in, like how is the true onboarding though? Like, cause a lot of the other folks, you know, been here, if you have been here, you can have the connections so you can collaborate more easily. But if you don't have those connections, like how, what did you do differently or what would, or your advice would be to folks as to kind of overcome that? Yeah, I was I was lucky to be able to do some of my onboarding um, in person, coming into the office and meeting with my manager. Um, but I think when it comes to onboarding, a lot of the maybe anxieties around, you know, um, like Marielle said, like pinging people and feeling like you might be bugging them, um, I think is one of the hurdles that is kind of difficult to overcome in that in that uh, onboarding process. And um, so I personally think having 
um, some sort of in-person opportunity was really helpful for me. I think it sped up my understanding of the company and my role um, by being able to connect really early on with my manager and having a good rapport with them uh, has helped me with my skill set and, and moving my um, skills forward. And so I think that's the biggest space where I think we need to um, be able to focus on, I guess, in a collaborative and, and hybrid work is how do we onboard? And I think the answer is having that human connection right from the beginning, I think is the most important. To add to that, uh, one thing that I really liked when I onboarded was like having the coffee breaks because it was a great way for me to meet uh, people that I wouldn't have met uh, in my day to day. So like the executives, they will have like like their own like coffee break every so often. And I will just jump in and meet people uh, that way. Um, and I think what what's good as well is like just having um, the different groups within WatchGuard. So like, for example, like women of WatchGuard, where there are like a group of people that, you know, will organize uh, events and, you know, it's a good way to meet people in different teams. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things, you know, I feel like that's one of the things that I worry that we fall off the wagon a little bit over time because you fall into bad habits, but yeah, I think one of the things that I always feel like is collaboration it has to be intentional, right? So you still have to make the effort because people collaborate in different ways and you got to provide them those different means to do so. So to, as a wrap up, I'm going to fire up one question and I'll go around. We'll start with Anthony this time. And just, you know, if there's one takeaway, it could be something that you've learned about collaboration through the hybrid work operation or the challenges it might be. If you had one takeaway from it, what would that be? that you would like to share with, with the rest of the employees and all our listeners here? Um, I'll start with me. So look, I think yeah. we're able to do more. I think we're, we are actually able to do more. Um, you're able to interact with more people. Um, obviously, everyone does prefer the face-to-face -face where you can say, oh, I've got an idea. And you can call over Mark and say, this is our idea that we have. So it's there's pros and cons, but I will say we've, we've found that, and if I look at my sales engineers, rather than them doing a workshop for 20 people in a room, they can now do 100 virtually. So we're able to get across and grow our business a lot quicker. So the scalability is there too. Um, and we can kind of stretch ourselves to be doing more. When you've got a small team, virtually it looks like you've got a big team because you can be doing more throughout the day. And I think that's for us here, we still got a good sized team, but I, it looks like we're just as big as our competitors are because we're able to do more, we're able to jump on calls quicker. Um, and that's kind of where the benefit has been been for me and, and what I see with how hybrid has in terms of collaboration. That's great. Uh, Devin, how about you? Sure. I think you touched on it a little bit, Prakash, of the thing that I learned. And I think it's being intentional, as you said, of um, now meeting with people comes at a scheduling time with them through a meeting or or messaging them. And I think we learn that we need to be concise and intentional with providing agendas up front, providing documentation that's needed and, and action items. And so I think it helps us kind of move at a clear uh, path or at a clear pace um, with everyone being able to be intentional in that collaborative space. So. Um, I think that's been the biggest thing. And even socially, being intentional socially of those five minutes before a meeting starts is making sure you're filling that space with um, social interaction and not leaving it, you know, in that awkward silence. So being intentional in those in those small instances that you can, I think, is really important for collaboration in a hybrid space. Great. Uh, Mario? I think for me, what I learned is really improving like the communication between the different teams and with the time zone difference like making sure that everyone is you know aware of what the expectations are so it's really just communicating what the expectations and making sure that we're all in the same page and really documenting like what we need to do going forward because sometimes because we are in different uh, regions, it's a lot easier to have uh, something to refer to um, when you're in a different time zone. 
great point. Yeah. Austin, awesome. we'll have you the last word here. Uh, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest surprising benefits is just how, um, how it's been a forcing function of like our DEI initiatives as a company and to just force and drive, you know, equitable interactions, uh, equitable career paths. I mean, things of that nature. Um, when you're all in person or you're all remote or you're doing a kind of hybrid thing, like we had been doing a little bit before pandemic at Watchcar, but now to Devin and uh, Marielle and Anthony's point, we're being very intentional with what we're doing. That intentionality is what has now driven like, no, we are all into this hybrid environment. And it's really driven that equitable interactions. It's given people voices who may not have had voices or seats at the table who may not have had that prior, just because maybe they weren't in the corporate office or they weren't in an office at all. And I think that's one of the uh, kind of unforeseen benefits of this intentional hybrid environment that to me has just been an amazing part of driving WatchGuard's culture forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Devin, Anthony, and Marielle for participating here. Some great insights and appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.